Well, some of you may not know that Kent County, Delaware has a decent sized Amish community. Lisa, I had no idea. That is, until I heard about the Amish Country Bike Tour. And I figured what better way to learn about this 29 year old tradition than to head up to Kent County and hop on a bike myself. With over 2,800 cyclists, the Amish Country Bike Tour is considered the largest cycling event in Delaware. But it didn't start out that way. In fact, it's taken 29 years to get to where it is today. It started with a cycling group um, and it's a casual ride and they got more and more cyclists involved and it got so big that 15 years ago they came to the tourism office and said, could you take this over and plan it for us? So now it's grown to over 2,800 cyclists we had last year from 22 um, states and um, it's an awesome event because it's not a timed event. Today, the event features five different loops, all at varying lengths. Lorraine Dion with Kent County Tourism says they do this to accommodate riders with different experience levels. Well, you go through the Amish countryside and you can pick the tour loops you want to go on. So you can do a 15 mile, 25, 50, 62 and 100 mile. Last year we had 632 cyclists did the 100 mile and that's an all day event. One of the things all of the loops have in common is great scenery. And it takes you through the Amish countryside and all the back roads in Kent County. And most people don't know we have an Amish community here, but it gets you seeing all the little farms and things you don't notice, you know, in your in your car. All five of the rides start at the Legislative Mall in Dover, with the riders being led out by Mr. Ben Miller and his horse and buggy. He's awesome. He's, gosh, he's been doing it for over 10 years that I know about, and he leads the cyclists out, and, um, and then they go out to the county line, and it's a, a really cool start. Scattered throughout the loops are several rest stops where riders can stop and refuel, but Lorraine says one stop always seems to be a little busier than the rest. We have four, and the most uh, popular one and everyone goes to is the Amish Schoolhouse um, rest stop. It's right behind the schoolhouse, so you can see the schoolhouse. So you get water with a pump, and um, but it's the pie. Um, on top of all the great things we give cyclists to keep them going, um, we have over 300 baked um, pies we use, and uh, the cyclists, it's called the pie stop. I mean, people fight over the pie slices there. All throughout the course, both on bikes and at rest stops, will be bike mechanics who Lorraine says play a huge part in the day's success. We have mechanical support, so we have five bike shops this year who will be helping us, like they'll be riding the routes looking for, you know, people, you know, their bikes have broken down, or and then sometimes they'll hang out at rest stops, and then we can always call in. We have a command center, so we can call in, and so they can get their bike fixed, you know, minor repairs. So our bike shops are really big partners in this, or it would not work out. So what exactly will you see on the ride? Well, I figured what better way to find out than to hop on a bike myself. On the three mile stretch of the route I rode, I saw all different examples of the Amish lifestyle. Everything from old farmhouses, windmills, and livestock. I even passed a few horse and buggies along the way. And of course, I made a stop at that old schoolhouse Lorraine was talking about for some pie. Mm, pie and biking, who would have thought? And whether you're an experienced cyclist, a casual rider, or just curious as to what's going on, Lorraine says to come check it out. Uh, we encourage people to come out and participate, volunteer, that would be great. But also just to come out and watch the cyclists and hang out, it's a really great event. No, I'm not usually a pie guy, but I'll tell you this, I wouldn't mind riding a few more miles just to get another slice of it. Well, the 2015 Amish Country Bike Tour is Saturday, September 12th with a mass start at 8 a.m. They also have optional start times between 7 and 10. Now, you can register all the way up to the day of the event between 7 and 10. Now, cost for adults is $60. Now, it's $30 for kids aged 5 through 16, and children 4 and under are free. And there's pie. And there's <laughs> lots and lots of pie. <laughs> I guess I couldn't expect you to bring some back for us. Anyway, you know, exercise certainly is a great step toward a healthy lifestyle, but an even bigger part of living that healthy lifestyle and losing weight, if that's what you're after, is a healthy, well-balanced diet. And experts say certain foods you eat could actually help you get more bang for your buck during a gym session. Here are a few things you can bite into to help ensure a worthy workout.
Your workout can go one of two ways. You feel motivated and energized, or it can zap your last bit of energy. The right meal beforehand can help you keep up your momentum. First on the list, yogurt. Make sure it's plain with no added sugar. Sweet tooth lovers can add a teaspoon of honey. Even though a banana weighs in 90 calories, they're packed with potassium. Potassium is vital to stop muscle cramps and spasms common after workouts. Other choices are fruits like citrus and apples. Try applesauce for a natural sugary kick. If you need something filling, choose whole wheat bread. Top it with a cut-up hard-boiled egg for a kick of protein without weighing you down. And for coffee lovers, stick with it. A hot drink like herbal tea or coffee is low in calories and can satisfy hunger. Lastly, carrots are rich in vitamin A and take a long time to digest. Just a few tips to help make your workouts better. Now, always make sure you eat three hours before your workout to pack in energy, and drinking a bottle of water keeps you from feeling bloated. And I always like to eat a banana before I work yeah, out. Yeah, I need to fuel before my workout. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my favorite go-to meals is pretty healthy, and it's super simple. Coming up next, we're in the Del Marva Life kitchen making a tasty dish. I like to call it a Thanksgiving in a bowl. <laughs> Del Marva Life, we'll be right back.